What began as a routine observation of the third interstellar object ever recorded in our solar system, 3I Atlas, has turned into something far stranger, far darker, and infinitely more important. Because deep in the vast cold void beyond Mars, the web detected something it shouldn't have. Not just light, artificial light, a glow that behaves like no comet or asteroid, a signature that follows no known physics of reflection or refraction, and now astronomers and astrophysicists are left with one question that chills them to the core. What is 3i Atlas really? As we dive deep into the data, it becomes clear that what has just been discovered reignites the oldest and most terrifying question of all time. Are we alone? 3i Atlas was first spotted as a faint speck on the edge of the solar system, moving with a trajectory no local object could follow. It was clearly interstellar born beyond the gravitational embrace of our sun, flung across the galaxy by some unknown force, now drifting silently through our neighborhood. At first it was treated as a cosmic curiosity like its predecessors, Oumuamua and Borisov, but even in its earliest images, something felt off. Unlike most interstellar objects, 3i Atlas was unusually bright, and not in a way that made sense. Its magnitude didn't correspond to its estimated size or composition, it shimmered with an unnatural consistency, its brightness neither fading as expected, nor flaring with any sign of outgassing or dust release. Traditional comets tend to brighten in bursts as ice sublimates, but this one remained steady, as if it were powered from within. Telescopes across the globe turned to observe it, and Webb, with its unparalleled ability to peer into the infrared spectrum, was brought in to decode the mystery. What it saw changed everything, the James Webb Space Telescope, perched a million miles from Earth at the Lagrange Point, was designed to see the unseen, to cut through the glare of stars and reveal what's hidden in the shadows. Its gaze upon 3i Atlas was expected to clarify the confusion. Instead, it amplified it. The telescope's instruments detected a centralized thermal emission that didn't correlate with any natural reflection of sunlight. Typically, a comet shines due to the sun's rays bouncing off dust and ice. But 3i Atlas showed an internal heat signature, something that radiated from the core outward. This wasn't scattered light. It was emitted light. The thermal mapping revealed a pattern that followed no known distribution curve of natural objects. It pulsed faintly, irregularly, and most disturbingly it seemed to cycle at intervals. That rhythm, repeating ever so subtly, suggested not randomness but design. Some scientists at NASA and the European Space Agency proposed exotic explanations. Radioactive decay, subsurface friction, alien isotopes. But as more data came in, those theories collapsed. The only consistent explanation left on the table was the one no one wanted to write down. This object might be powered. As data from Webb, Hubble and terrestrial observatories piled up, a profile of 3i Atlas began to emerge, and it looked nothing like any known celestial body. Its trajectory was too precise to be chaotic, as if it were choosing its path, subtly adjusting course through gravity wells. Its rotation was unnaturally stable, with a tumbling motion that defied standard inertial drift, and its lack of a cometary tail, even when passing near solar radiation, suggested a shell or casing, perhaps something protecting it from heat. Then came the most controversial finding. The albedo, or reflectivity, of its surface was measured to be nearly perfect in parts, approaching that of polished metal, not rock, not ice, not dust, but metal. The implications hit like a shockwave across the astronomical community. If it was metallic, structured and emitting energy, then we were no longer observing a natural object. We were observing technology. Suddenly the term probe was whispered in hallways, beacon, craft, even artifact. The idea that this might be an alien spacecraft was no longer relegated to conspiracy forums. It was now quietly circulating in institutional lay. Emails behind encrypted firewalls, perhaps. The most damning piece of evidence wasn't the thermal emissions or the trajectory or even the strange metallic signature. It was the light. Photometric analysis showed something chilling. The light coming from 3i Atlas was focused in a narrow spectral band. In other words, it wasn't a broad natural reflection of sunlight, but a controlled emission of specific wavelengths. This is precisely what we do with LED arrays, 
laser communication systems, and spacecraft signal beacons. Furthermore, this band included frequencies often used in communication and guidance systems on Earth. Not only that, but the intensity of the light seemed to respond ever so slightly to solar radiation, as though some onboard system were adjusting it in real time. It flickered not at random, but with a strange intermittent pulse. Astronomers ran the data through known signal models. The results were inconclusive but not meaningless. Some claimed the pulses resembled binary sequences. Others said it might be a rotating power source. But the conclusion was undeniable. This was not a passive object. It was doing something, something deliberate, and we were watching it live. As the data poured in, a team of astrophysicists from MIT and Harvard ran a deep signal analysis over the electromagnetic emissions coming from 3.I Atlas. At first glance, the frequencies seemed random, just noise scattered across the spectrum. But when they applied Fourier transforms to isolate cyclical patterns, something emerged. Within the static, buried like a whisper beneath the chaos, was a structured, repeating pulse too precise to be natural. It wasn't a standard binary, nor a typical modulation used in human technology, but it bore the unmistakable fingerprint of intentional encoding. Some speculated it could be a beacon, a repeating broadcast intended for receivers not of earthly origin. Others theorized it could be telemetry, a constant data stream sent back to wherever this object came from. The unsettling part was this. Whatever the message was, it hadn't changed since Webb first detected it. It was as if 3i Atlas wasn't trying to talk to us, but someone else and maybe that someone had already heard it. News of the discovery spread quickly through the highest levels of scientific and defense institutions. A confidential report circulated internally within NASA and then leaked to an unnamed journalist revealed that top officials were already coordinating with global space agencies to determine whether Three High Atlas posed a threat. Some scientists argued it was benign, an ancient probe, perhaps centuries old, on a pre-programmed route through the stars. Others weren't so optimistic. They raised questions no one could answer. If it's transmitting, then who is receiving? If it has light emissions, does it also have propulsion? If it's here by design, then why now? The report mentioned the possibility, however remote, that Three-Eyed Atlas was not just passing through, but observing, tracking planetary alignments, electromagnetic fields, or even advanced civilizations. The possibility ignited panic behind the scenes, because if this object wasn't alone, then something else might be on the way, something that sent it. Further investigation into the luminosity of 3i Atlas led to a revolutionary hypothesis, that the object wasn't just emitting energy, it was harvesting it. The way its light output fluctuated with proximity to the sun, combined with its apparent lack of chemical reactions, supported the idea that it might be using a solar collection array or photonic absorption system embedded beneath its surface. A group of theorists postulated that the dust cloud surrounding the object could serve a dual function, both as camouflage to mask its artificial structure and as a medium through which to absorb solar radiation. If true, this would suggest that 3i Atlas is a self-sustaining craft designed to travel indefinitely through deep space, refueling itself as it moves from star to star. This concept aligns with known theoretical models of interstellar probes, machines that could remain dormant for centuries, activating only when reaching a star system worth investigating. And if our solar system triggered that activation, then the message was received. As international space agencies scrambled for answers, one truth became increasingly clear. We are not ready. Despite decades of speculation about extraterrestrial contact, our political, scientific, and philosophical systems are wildly unequipped to process what 3i Atlas might represent. No official statements have been made, but internal documents leaked from agencies in France, Japan, and Brazil all hinted at similar conclusions that this object might not just be an anomaly, but a first encounter in slow motion. And unlike what Hollywood taught us, there was no landing, no sudden appearance in the sky. No immediate answers, only data, only light, only silence. Webb continues to observe the object every day, and yet every answer it delivers seems to raise two more questions. If this is contact, then it's contact on their terms, not ours. Quiet, distant, unsettling. 
And that may be the most terrifying thing of all, because what we're witnessing may not be an invitation. It may be surveillance, and we may have already been seen. 